In today's video, Batman gets a new set of wheels as we have a look at the Mattel Batman missions. This is Batman and the Bat Cycle. Okay, for obvious reasons, there's no way Batman would be able to ride a motorcycle with this much weight on the front of it, but still, we will have a look at this amazing vehicle, which was provided to us by viewer Bill. the first thing we have a look at is how tall the Batman stands. Now this is pretty much the same Batman as we've gotten with the other Batman mission releases, except for some variations to his to his suit. Well, we'll cover off that in a second, not getting too ahead of ourselves. We'll stop the Ultra Measuretron right there. We'll hold up the Ultra Measuretron to tell us that the figure stands 6.5 inches in height, which if you are interested in centimeters, I'm more than happy to oblige, 16.6 centimeters in height. Here are a couple of other Batman figures that we've already had a look at from the Batman missions lineup. There is regular Batman. Well, it's not quite, I don't think he was called regular Batman, but he was the most original, I guess, basic Batman that we had. For some strange reason, I have a tough time standing. Here is the glider Batman that we already had a look at. And here also is the Batman that came included with Bane. And I'm going to put actually him closest to the one that came with the Bat Cycle. Still don't know why this one's not standing too well. There we go. I'm going to put these two together because they're actually the most identical to their armor. In fact, don't believe me, we'll hold up the two side by side. You can see even right down to the utility belt, they are identical which is surprising because it seemed to take this long before we got ourselves what looks to be carbon copy clones of one another, except for the fact that this Batman does have goggles over top of his eyes. This one obviously does not. Other than that, it's pretty safe to say that they are the same figures, other than for the fact that the gauntlets, yes, the gauntlets are different from one another, but that's simply, I mean, this, these are just swiveled in. You could ideally unpeg these, just pop the hands right out if you wanted to, and switch them around even though that's not their intended purpose. The torso area has the same sort of armoring up, different coloring of paint of course. Even the bat emblem are identical to one another. They also both sport the same cloth cape slotted into the same area on the back on the bottom of his cowl. So really not a whole lot different. Kind of dig in this one because it kind of looks like tactical suit Batman from Justice League. Again, nice coloring on the silver. I primarily mostly black Batman, other than just the silvering on the front plating here, whereas at least this one, to its credit, had a lot more extra coloring happening to it. But one thing I do like is that all the uh, Batman Missions figures, even Batmans, which are sort of all similar to one another in their own way, but they're all, all unique also in their own way. I like that they all have different color costumes. So as a kid, because that's certainly the mindset I have to have when I'm having a look at the figures like this, I have to think like a kid. And as a kid, I would absolutely have loved the fact that Batman has so many variations to his suit. You can imagine that each Batman mission, if you will, would have its own corresponding suits. Uh, posability on this guy, it would be all the same as the other ones that we've had a look at. He's got a swiveling around with his head, which also hinges up and down. Doesn't really go too far back, but it does hinge forward. Again, there's a close-up look at his goggled vision. Uh, his arms rotate all the way around. They also hinge out, which unfortunately could not be the same thing that I could say for the legs. The legs limited, yes, but to be expected by now, and uh, they only swivel back and forth. So the same as all the other figures that we've gotten up to this point, hinging in the leg, the knee articulation certainly does come in handy for when he's going to go on to his bat cycle. And don't worry, I'm going to have a look at that as well. Uh, he's got the hinge in the elbow, which also allows the form to rotate all the way around. And you can also rotate the hand all the way around. And that, in a nutshell, is the Batman that comes included with the bat cycle. It's interesting to note as well that this particular Batman doesn't really necessarily have a name. Or as far as I know, he doesn't have a name. He's just basically Batman with the bat cycle. Speaking of the bat cycle, there it is right there, a much larger vehicle. I'm thrilled for the fact that uh, Batman Missions actually marks one of the newest entries in which we've got a Batman figure line that actually comes with 
vehicles. It seems to be so few and far between. The bat cycle is nice. It's a little on the hollow side. You can kind of sort of feel that it's just two shells of plastic that have been put together. The tires are also plastic and uh, they don't have, unfortunately they didn't like color the spokes, which I kind of wish that they could have painted at least at the very least in silver. Even the back tire also doesn't have that as well. Unfortunately though, where that lacks the color, it does more than make up for it because you've got the coloring of the black back, uh, kind of back casing here, the back section of the, the bat cycle as well as the front here with these gun turrets are done in almost this kind of bluish gray. Uh, speaking of also, I don't know if these are supposed to be gun turrets or missiles, but it could certainly be said that Batman is fully armored up when it comes to his ride. I uh, love the additional kind of caramel color that they've put in the front turrets. I'm going to go ahead and just call them turrets. The engine also has some gold coloring there as well. And that same sort of coloring also makes its way into the handles. Now the handlebar doesn't actually swivel. There's nothing moving component wise on the cycle. You feel is at some point that this, the front tire does move, but it really actually doesn't. Uh, they don't have a kickstand, but if I just move Batman out of the way for a second. Based on the way that they've designed the cycle, the cycle stays still stays upright because of these extra side feet. They're not so much wheels as they don't really move, but they're enough, they're enough as sort of like support stands to keep the cycle upright. Um, it's also got some headlights on the front there as well and a few little pegged openings there that will eventually house this ridiculously large cannon. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. The back also has a few clips that will house the included missiles that come also with this. I noticed that there's this peg point on the back and I'm looking as far as, a, as much as I can and I don't see any real reason why that peg point exists. It's almost like it's supposed to be there, but again, I really don't know what that's supposed to be for. It's got some nice molding and sculpting to the plastic. Nothing more boring really than when you look at a flat piece of plastic paneling and think really there should be something there detail wise. But it's nice to know that even on the side they've almost put this like meshing armor on the side of the bat cycle. You can kind of use your imagination to imagine that this is a very heavily armored bulletproof uh, bat cycle. It doesn't really kind of look that much like a bat. In fact, looking at the top of it, it feels like it's actually more like an insect. But I guess as a cycle goes, it's still a pretty neat looking rendition of the very classic bat cycle. Okay, so let's that's the bat cycle. Let's have a look at the cannon that comes included with this. Now, this is all part of this air attack gimmick in the sense that you've got this accordion that projects a burst of air and the air comes out the end, which also would allow it to shoot a missile. That sounds like it's going to be a segue to something else. It will be. So nice detailing also in the cannon itself. There's pegs on the undersides that will peg onto the front, but it also pegs into other places as well. If you could believe it, as if a heavy cannon on the front of the cycle wasn't enough, somehow Mattel would try to convince you that this is also supposed to fit into Batman's hand. According to the package, at least, it's supposed to fit into Batman's hand. Now, you can use the larger peg it seems to get a more stable fit than the smaller peg in the front, but it's unfortunately too heavy. There's no way Batman can properly hold it. One of two things either ends up happening. The figure falls over or the arm falls forward because it just can't hold and support the proper weight. I don't even know again, unless this was made out of styrofoam, I don't know how Batman would be able to wield such a mighty cannon and fire it at anybody. He'd be half, spending half the time actually just dragging it around Gotham City. Luckily for him, luckily for Batman's arm at least, you can also attach this to the bat cycle, which leads to some ridiculous results. First and foremost, it's intended to really fit into the front, but it's also supposed to be able to go into other places as well. So you're going to take the pegs, line them up to the holes, plug them into place, and you've got this contraption. Now I would ask the question how Batman would even be able to see past this Certainly also, it would also mean too, I would think that while he's driving it, it would make the front of the cycle very front heavy, allowing it probably to be dragging its way along Gotham as he's trying his best to fire off this cannon. It plugs into other places as well. Now you can untake, unplug that right there. And there's also these little connector points on the sides of the cycle, which again, from a feasible standpoint, it makes absolutely no sense how that could even work. The cycle would essentially just be dragging its way on this side, unless again, this was made out of a very light material, like 
like bread. If it was made out of bread, it wouldn't be so much the issue. Now, there is also, there's a hole on this side, but you can't quite fit it unless you bring the smaller peg as to the front of the peg point rather than using the larger peg because it just won't plug into place. There's not that other hole. I'm curious as to why this side, obviously this is a screw hole, but why they didn't just finish it on this side as well. They give you two peg points, this side and this side that you could alternate it. Still the workaround is the smaller peg and it still serves somewhat the same purpose other than again like there's not as much stability with keeping it in place. You may find often at times it just starts separating itself from the rest of the cycle. Another place that you can put it to, and initially I thought it would actually go up to here as well, but yeah that's that would actually make more sense, but there's no connector points up there. This at least could fire over top of Batman's head. If it was angled straight forward, well we know that would end very tragically, but at least if it could peg up to the top, you'd be able to fire up. You can't do that. Don't know why. There are also these little connector points on the side. They're not really intended to house the cannon, but if you force it in there, it does stay in place. I would almost even enjoy putting it back there than I would be putting on the side. Even on the top seems ridiculous, but at least this kind of looks like a sidecar. I mean, like looking at the cycle, it looks like something I would have imagined seeing from Cops, that old cartoon back in the day. Fighting crime in a future time, this almost seems like something I would see from Cops. So let's go ahead and take Batman as he does actually fit onto the cycle. We're going to go ahead and bend his knees like that. We're going to bring his arms up and we'll just kind of adjust it accordingly. We can fit him over top. There's nothing more disappointing than a Batman that simply doesn't fit over top of a cycle. Like the old animated series Batman and Bat Cycle, they actually cheated by having Batman already pre-molded to the cycle. Which was unfortunate because a lot of kids like myself who owned it would have almost enjoyed just having a Batman that could actually be taken off, be put back on, but unfortunately that cycle just didn't do that. This one, this one does and it uh, sits actually quite comfortably. It doesn't have too much of that butt gap to seat problem that we sometimes have with figures that sit on top of cycles. And uh, it still is balanced because it's got those little side, uh, those under bottom feet support. And then we can go ahead and take once again the cannon and we can put it on top. But before we do that, I wanna show you these suction cup. They're not even so much suction cups, they're plastic darts, very hollow plastic darts. And then they've got a rubber tip. So when you're hitting it at anybody, which I would hope you're not doing, you're not gonna hopefully do any damage at least in the process of it. So you can take one and it only fits one, fits into the end barrel. And then when you press this, this is the air attack functionality of it. When you squeeze it, it fires off the missile and it actually fires it off a great distance. Something that you may be mindful of because you only really have three darts. Once those fire off, you know how missiles usually go, you fire them way off into the distance of a room, you never find them again, and that's unfortunate. But for the process of showing you what it all looks like when you get it all together, I'm gonna to plug it onto the top, and then we'll just move Batman's cape out of the way. And there's these little clips on the back that supports the other two darts. So wherever you take Batman, wherever, whatever adventures he goes on, he always has all his missiles readily available. And there's also this little stopping clip right there that keeps the missile from going any bit further forward. This one, I sort of missed its mark, but we'll fit that back into place. And then we can drape Batman's cape over top of that. Now again, I asked the question of this, how could Batman possibly be able to see what he's going? Unless this was supposed to be like a little view screen and Batman's looking through the view screen, or maybe the goggles actually, I don't know, somehow work with a camera up at the front so he's able to see where he's going. But I would imagine again, stability, and moving this around Gotham City would be next to impossible. Mattel seems to think you can do it, and by the proof of the pudding, they've done it in toy form. I think I would ultimately just leave the cannon right off, or at the very least, I was plugging into the side here, so that at least you've got the visibility of being able to use Batman just on a bat cycle. I'm happy at least that they gave you the option to unpeg it. This is something that if you decided that this is maybe overly ridiculous, like this guy that thinks, you can just take it off and leave it off all in its entirety. And still, you've got a pretty neat cycle when that happens. Yeah, no matter how you attach the cannon, it does look a little awkward. I ultimately, here for final looks, just decided to put the cannon at the side of the bat cycle, but it doesn't look right, does it? I guess it's supposed to really go onto the top. 
but I think I might just ultimately leave it off altogether. The cycle is cool enough that without the cannon, it doesn't look like something's supposed to be there. Uh, granted, there's the holes on the top there, but I could pass that off as being something else. Maybe those are headlights, for example. It's a pretty neat looking cycle. Hollow, yes, it's really light, but at least it houses a Batman. And to the credit of this Bat toy line, at least the Batman can be removable. He's not permanently placed in, in the Bat Cycle that you can't remove him. Now, the Batman animated series one from Kenner a long time ago actually had, I believe, a zip line to it, which would also explain why Batman had to be attached to it. This one only belt has the bells and whistles of the air power. I'm using the bunny quotations in the background here. The air power kind of gives you a ridiculous air cannon. It fires darts, and I know kids love firing darts, but it doesn't really fit anywhere without it looking awkward. They entertain the idea that you can put it in Batman's hand, but that's laughable. There's no way Batman's going to possibly be able to hold that in the toy or in real life. Batman would have serious arthritis in his shoulders. Still, though, I'm probably going to just end up displaying this Batman on the Bat Cycle because it looks really cool. And I like the fact that finally, for a long time, it's been a long time, it seems, we finally get ourselves a Bat toy line that actually has cool vehicles. I'm looking forward to having a look at the Bat Mobile. I don't know why I had to pause when I said Bat Mobile. But we're also going to have a look at the Batmobile, which the good friend of mine, very good viewer of mine, Bill, took the liberty of sending my way. A big thank you, by the way, to Bill for including the Batman with Bat cycle that we had a look at in this review. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Batman Missions toy line is still available in stores. And uh, this one's pretty neat. And the price point isn't overly expensive. I think for the Bat cycle, Bill might have to correct me on this one, it's probably about $30 to $35. And uh, with the holiday season, of course, fast approaching, we're kind of getting down to the wire. I admit that I'm a little behind when it comes to holiday shopping, but we are getting down to the wire that if you're looking for last great gift ideas for that someone in your life, say they like Batman. It's kind of a neat idea. I'm sure the kids are probably going to want these for the holiday season. Like I said, today we were having a look at the Batman missions. This was the Batman and Bat Cycle. If you want to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman missions uh, figures that I've had look at on this channel thus far, because there's going to still be a whole lot coming your way, there's a playlist just for you. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button also down below, as it will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. Thanks for watching, guys. And thank you, Bill. I'll see you guys next time.